do I believe that maybe because I schooled in America was why I had an advantage of surviving in Nigeria? If that was the advantage, I would have not been collecting 13,500 naira. <laughs> What's up, guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bimi, and I am a Nigerian lifestyle blogger. If you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. And if you're returning, you already know that you are very, very welcome. Happy, happy, happy election Saturday. Today, I am recording this video. I don't know what it's be out, but I'm recording this video on election Saturday. Nigeria decides 2019. We're finally going to know who's going to be our president for the next four years, yada, yada, yada. I hope you went out to vote. So from the title of this video, you guys already know what I want to talk about. And um, my motivation behind filming this video for you guys was one, that is basically what my channel started on. So it has always been about Nigeria, moving back to Nigeria and trying to showcase Nigeria to the world, to you guys, like based on my own experiences. And secondly, because a couple of weeks ago, I had stumbled on two different videos, videos from two different people's perspectives, um, that they regret moving back to Nigeria, you know, you know, based on like their struggles and everything that they had been through. And, you know, I was just like, man, I could relate <laughs> a lot with a lot of things that they were saying. And I actually dropped comments on one of the videos. And, oh my God, guys, a lot of people from the comment that I dropped on one of the videos actually came over to my channel and even went further to follow me on social media, on Instagram. I got a whole bunch of messages saying that I should then talk about my own perspective about Nigeria because a lot of them want to move back home. So let me even read some of them in particular. So this person, CEO Chick, says, Hey, hi, hi, baby. I hope you're doing well. This might be a bit personal, but I've been watching your videos for a while including the Returning Back to Nigeria series. Can you do a mini update on your life so far, the struggles, the successes, ETC? It doesn't need to be too personal and you are under no obligation to do this. I hope you have a great weekend. I am having a great weekend. Another one is, uh, I came from watching M. Etetim. Okay, so the video I watched was from M. Etetim and read your advice to her, which was solid. So check to see if you had a channel and watched your own advice to us. Um, immediately subscribe now. I'm about to binge watch all your content. Love from the UK, Ebele. Thank you so much, Ebele. I got a whole bunch of those messages. I don't want to start reading everything out chat. And people were like, okay, so tell us your own perspective um, based on like your experiences. So that's exactly what I am going to do in this video. So it's going to be like a chit chat. And um, I don't have anything written down. So I'm just going to be saying things at the top of my head. I really hope this video is not too long. But if it's long, you people will watch it like that. Because I always try to give people short videos. So this one, you will take it by force. Anyway, so um, I'm starting from the top. So I moved back to Nigeria in 2015. Um, let me start by let me start by talking about the reason why I moved back to Nigeria. So, and I think that's uh, the place, that's where a lot of people get confused. So a lot of people... Um, move back to Nigeria because they see that, um, and I may be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, because they see that, you know, everybody's making it, or a lot of people, you could even be parental pressure. I had parental pressure, but that wasn't the reason why I moved back. I mean, my parental pressure even stopped way before I decided to even move back, so it wasn't even because of my parents. Um, a lot can also be relationship, there's a lot of the whole lot of reasons why people move back to Nigeria. So um, I moved back to Nigeria because I decided, and God told me that I should move back. So you want to like, what do you mean? She has come again. God told you, see, fam. The different ways that God can talk to you. When I was in America, after graduating, I was working on a research, whatever, whatever. I don't want to go into all that. Everything was just not working out. All of a sudden, they pulled the funding from the research where I was working. All of a sudden, accommodation was saying something else. All of a sudden, I thought I got one job, but it was a scam job. I'm talking about that in another video that I traveled all the way to New York for. It was a scam job. Like, nothing, absolutely nothing was working out. And I know myself, the way God speaks to me is pretty much like that. And I understand that that's how my life is. So, it definitely so you need to have a reason for moving back to Nigeria. Don't just like I said, I had parental pressures. Not maybe not even say parental pressure because my dad was indifferent. My mom was like, You need to come home. How can you the first girl, the first born, the first daughter be living in the America? You know. But after a while she got over it and she was fine with me staying there. My friend, my dear, I was the one that decided in my heart of hearts, like, you know what? I can do this. So in fact, I remember the day I called them and said, I booked a ticket and I am packing all my life for the past, I was in America for about six years, packing all my, all six years of my life back. 
to Nigeria. And I remember when I would talk to a lot of my friends about it then, and they'd be like, really, do you think that that's the best um, thing for you to do? Are you, you're going to do NYSC, you're going to this, you're going to that, are you sure? Like, I knew NYSC was a struggle, I had read stories, like, I, you know when you know that this thing, this place you're going to, it, it is bad. I didn't even have, like, nobody telling me, oh, it was good, it was rosy and everything. What I had was people telling me, don't come, stay back, you know, and all that great stuff. And I was like, I was still going to come because it was like God was just pushing me to come, even though it was very blurry. The vision was blurry at the time. I did not know whether I wanted to start a clothing line. I did not know whether I wanted to, I had not even started YouTube. Like, I didn't even know what kind of jobs I could get. I didn't know anything. I just moved back. I was living with my parents because, I mean, my parents live in Lagos. So, um... I said disturbing them that you know I need a job. Like I can't just sit down. I need to do something before NYC starts. I need all my enrollment for NYC and everything. And then um see those of you that move back home that you have maybe your father has one business somewhere and as you are moving back home you become the CEO of that company. Fam, you guys are the real MVP, yo. Or your mother has one, or you have one uncle somewhere that you know wants to just call hello, uncle, I'm back. You don't be like, oh yeah, take this letter and go to Buari and you just get a job like that. Fam, that wasn't the case for me. So it was basically when my father first started talking to people for me to get a job. Everybody was like, oh, well, she hasn't done NYSC. Nobody wanted to hire me. I was looking all through all these job search engines, job man, this, this, that, that, that. Fam, no job was coming. I finally, finally got a job at a company about the month after I moved back to Nigeria. And I was so excited about this job, guys. I was so excited. And I remember the day I went to collect the letter for this job. And that letter stated how much they would be paying me every month. I opened the um, letter and I saw that my salary was going to be 13,500 naira. I'm, no, I'm not missing what so I'm not missing what at all. 13,500 naira. Guys, this was in 2015. Exchange rate was already 300 and something naira to a dollar and I was collecting 13,500 naira as salary. I remember when I took the letter back home, I was telling my mom, a whole me, a whole chemical engineering graduate from the great Howard University. How in the world? My mother was like, you will go. <laughs> you will go because there's nothing for you to do. And that's how this country is. You will go. Don't worry. God will see you through and will figure you out. Trust me, at that point, I was like, what? Why am I in this country? Why did I move back? At least when I was in America, I was getting something from what I was doing. I could make hair for people and make extra money on the side. I was doing things. I could help in the church and they'd give me money on the side, like $100, $200, uh, sometimes up to a dollar, $1,000. Now I'm coming back to Nigeria and somebody's telling me that I'll be getting $13,500 naira. Also, I didn't have a car. So I was supposed to be taking the bus. I took the bus everywhere in Lagos. Yes, yes, I took the bus everywhere in this Lagos. And I was living in Bagada, which was on the mainland, and my office was in BI on the island. So 13,500 naira to go to work for 30 days, or okay, take away the weekends, you get the gesture. Transportation, okay, so I started going to work with my neighbor. My neighbor was also working on the island, Auntie Shola. So Auntie Shola would drop me at, was it CMS? And then I will find, like, I'll take just one bus to get to work. Guys, like, <laughs> that was it. Like, that was how I started my struggle in Nigeria. And <laughs> from that, you know, NYS started, that was the year that they decided that foreign students don't have to, they can't be in Lagos, they have to be, they can be in any other state. They posted me to Ondo State, Ikaria Koko. I have a video on it, NYSC, NYSC video. I'll post link it up here. Posted me to Ondo State real quick, fam. Like, <laughs> my accent, the, the American accent I moved to Nigeria with started fading, small, small. That's why I said speaking pigeon and Yoruba and everything, just like that. And for my 13,500 naira salary, I wasn't, I couldn't afford 5,000 naira food. Because I, like, I watched and I heard that, you know, when you go to restaurants, um, you 
you the, the cheapest you can eat for is five thousand naira. I think the, the problem that a lot of people have is you come to Nigeria and you want to live the lifestyle you were living in the abroad in Nigeria. Food is cheap in the abroad, food is not cheap in Nigeria, especially fancy um, places to eat. It is not cheap in like, cheap in Nigeria. I remember <laughs> Then about three four years ago, if I could save to buy shawarma, I can never forget. I'd save to buy shawarma at um this uh, supermarket not far from my house, Prince Ebano. If I could buy shawarma there, it was like a victory for me that week, and that was because maybe where I was working, maybe one of that just said, "I ah, take this two thousand, take this three thousand, you know, for the weekend and stuff like that." That was how I was able to have like shawarma money to buy. And I remember whenever I'd buy shawarma for my sister, she'd be the most excited person. Like, ah, baby, bought me shawarma because that was pretty much the best fine dining I could afford then. I used to come home to eat. My mom would always be like, oh, go out, can't see your friends, can't this, you know mothers now, and nobody's going to marry you if you don't go out and all that stuff. And I was like, go out to where? Where am I going to? You don't know that when I go there, eh, I have to spend. Like when you go out with your friends, you have to spend money, which I didn't have the money to spend. And, um, and I would be like, so how do I get there? I have to take, like, imagine you're going out with your friends, you've worn your makeup, everything, then you're not gonna take bus, because I was taking the bus everywhere. My mom was like, oh, you take a taxi. I was like, taxi? How much do you know that taxi is? I'm not taking no taxi. And I know one day she sat down, and this was after she was disturbing me, leave my house and go out, go out, and go and mingle with people. My mom doesn't like you just being a drag at all, but like, go out, meet people, talk to people, make connections. She's that kind of person. And one day she sat me down, she was like, you know that there are families in this neighborhood saying that that thirteen thousand five that you're earning, okay, let's add a little bit. Let's say twenty thousand naira is what the father at the end of the house collects every month, and they are surviving. There are people that get married on that salary, and they are surviving. So don't be, don't be. Um, your she called your back calls it a baramorije. I hope I pronounced it well. It's pretty much um. On, yeah, it's pretty much ungratefulness. Like, don't be ungrateful about your life, about your situation. Don't be ungrateful. Just be thankful. That's it. Like, guys, <laughs> since I've been to Lagos, I can tell you that I have worked in more than three, four places just to, you know, just to get my life on track, just to get my life started, just to gets me to you know the place where i am and where god is taking me so it's not something that just starts overnight you can't just come to lagos except like i said you have the connects in this world by all means you have arrived the big boy big girl <laughs> you know um the only thing i would go to the to the island to do was for work island k <laughs> if i wanted to hang out with anybody i remember when my husband and i had our first date well we weren't dating them but it was the first date it was on the mainland we went to ikeja city mall to see a movie like i'm sure if he also tells his story if i put the camera in front of him and he tells the story it's, it's the same thing like nobody just wakes up overnight and you just like bam like you just make it like that like except you're doing jazz or um like I said, you have the right connects and all that. So, um, what I'm trying to say in essence with all this story is that now I'm in a good place, you know. I have a great husband, I'm married, I whom I love so much. Um, I have a good job, you know, I'm thankful for that. And this has taken me away in 2019. To get to this point, it took me four years in Nigeria to get to this point where I can say, it's not like I'm all that okay. I mean, if I'm all that okay, why am I doing YouTube? Why do I need the YouTube money? I don't need to do YouTube. I mean, if my salary is enough for me, why am I doing YouTube? <laughs> you know? Or why am I trying to do other things on the side? No, like I'm not saying that I'm 100% there and perfect and everything. No, but what I'm trying to say is that I have gotten to a comfortable state that I can be like, you know, yes. I'm okay. I can continue hustling because we are all hustling in this Lagos. I can continue hustling and the hustle will continue to pay. So do I regret moving back to Nigeria? I do not regret moving back to Nigeria. Now, four years ago, if you had asked me when I just moved back, do you regret moving back to Nigeria? Absolutely, I would have said 100% I regret moving back to Nigeria. But like I said in the comment that I put, put in on that video, I said, 
Perseverance and patience is the key in this Nigeria. Forget it. I don't know anybody. I don't have connects. Forget, like, <laughs> I wish I did. I don't have connect. Somebody asked me a question. I can't find it now on my phone that, or on Instagram that, do I believe that maybe because I schooled in America was why I had an advantage of surviving in Nigeria? If that was the advantage, I would have not been collecting 13,500 naira. A lot of Nigerian graduates don't, you don't graduate and go and work somewhere and they tell you to come and collect 13,500 and you will take it. Eh? Like, like, you will not take it. So I don't, I don't think me schooling out of the country was an advantage because at the end of the day, a lot of these companies, some don't see us the same way, but a lot of these companies see everybody the same way. Where I work now, some people went to Tafa Balewa something college. This one, so your foreign degree <laughs> does not even say, does not even matter where I work right now. Like, you could have gone to um, some polytechnic for all they care. I mean, all of you are still going to college. All of you are collecting the same salary. All of you that they took it together. Do you get what I mean? So, I don't think it was, a, it was an advantage um, for me. It could have been for other people, but it wasn't an advantage for me. The successes of me being in Nigeria, which is also why I don't regret coming to Nigeria, was I was able to start my YouTube channel. In America, I did not even think of anything about YouTube. I didn't even think that I could start a YouTube channel. I didn't even think that I could face the camera and talk like this. And you know, everybody says, oh my God, she's funny. Oh my God, she gives good content and all that. Like, I didn't think I could do that. Part of the successes is um, building long-lasting relationships, you know. Part of the successes is making the right connects, meeting the right people. Um, part of the successes is being married, of course, even though some people say it's not an achievement, it's not a success. It's not your success, it's my success. <laughs> I have made the best relationships. Like, the be when I was leaving America, guys, I was crying because I was like, where my girl was like, I am going to miss this girl so much. Girls that I cannot do without. Like, one day I will, maybe, you know what? Sometime this month or in March, I will post a video that my friends made for me when I was leaving um, America. Like, that was how close we were. And I was crying that I was never going to get good friends like this. Fam, I got good friends. So, you move back to Nigeria. All of you that asked me to say my own perspective and talk, say my own story, you know, it's, it's, it, it wasn't just, Rome wasn't built in a day. It wasn't just one day. Um, I, it, 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 it's a gradual process that I kept building myself up for. And like I said, I'm not where I want to be right now. I mean, I'm not where I want to be, oh, as in, look it, look it, look it, look it, look it, look it is where I want to be, you know, but, I'm thankful, I'm grateful. Um, do I regret moving back to Nigeria? <laughs> I definitely do not regret it at all. And has it been rosy? No, it has not been rosy. Has it been a struggle? Oh my God, it's been one hell of a struggle. <laughs> but do I regret moving back to Nigeria? I don't. Are there times I don't want to be in Nigeria? Oh my God, all the time. There's several times that I'll just be like, can I just miss Nigeria from the abroad. I just want to wake up the next morning and just say, Hi Nigeria, I miss you. There are days that I have like that. I just want to be like, I don't just want to be in this country. We, after all said and done, um, do I feel like I would move out of the country someday? Ha <laughs> ha. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, like a lot of people say, oh, she's talking all this stuff. I don't want maybe in the nearest future that you now see me maybe in like Canada or America or something. And I'm like, ah, but this girl will say she don't regret. Please, if those places have greener pastures, if they tell me that they're going to be paying me this and that, and it is exactly what I want, by all means, buddy, I am out of this country on the first flight. <laughs> Just like every other country, you can't tell me that. You, if you wake up tomorrow and you go to America, everything, oh my God, all the money has, in this world has come to you. That's not possible. That doesn't happen. Or tell me, who did that happen to? If you wake up tomorrow, even if, or what's the thing they're doing now, the Canadian visa lottery, even if you go to Canada today, it's going to take a while before you can, you know, say, oh yes, I am on my two feet and, you know, yes, I can say that, yes, I have money and I can brag and everything. Rome wasn't built in a day, like I said. Like, it's, 
step by step life is step by step and it's a gradual gradual process at the end of the day we want to make an impact i want to make an impact i don't know about any other person i want to make an impact i want to be um I want to be known for something, something good, something creative. Like, I want to be known for that. So, that is my little rant um, about questions that you guys asked me um, about my life in Nigeria. An update, basically, so far. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. Um, don't forget to like this video, thumbs it up, it's what we are talking about, help us grow our ministry. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share with everybody that you know. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.